Hi there, I'm Danny Flexen and welcome to the latest edition of Seconds Out Flexpectations, the weekly show every Thursday, 4.30pm. We look ahead to the boxing action of the weekend and we're mainly going to be focusing, no surprise really, on Fight Camp Part 2, uh, which takes place tomorrow night. Uh, of course, Matchroom HQ, or rather the back garden of Matchroom HQ. Um, if you'll have seen my Reflections vlog on Monday, you'll know that I really enjoyed um, the Fight Camp launch show. Thought the atmosphere or lack of atmosphere actually worked pretty well, especially once the sun went in and uh, it really kind of created a great look and feel, um, a unique look and feel certainly. And the, the boxing action lived up to expectations, maybe even surpassed them as well. I think it's fair to say that after week one, until we have the pay-per-view on August 22nd, the likely quality dips a little bit. Um, Fight Camp week one had four on paper, relatively competitive fights and one kind of prospect versus um, contender, I guess, sort of fight in Dalton Smith and Nathan Bennett. Albeit, all the favourites with the bookies won their fights and most of them, apart from the main event, won quite well. Um, this week, Fight Camp Week 2, I'd say two of the fights, um, those involving Hopi Price and Akib Fiaz, certainly fall into that latter category. But there's three fights on there that, on paper, look to be pretty good. Although, again, I do expect the favourites to come through in each of those collisions. So, top of the bill, we've got Terry Harper defending the WBC Super Featherweight title against Natasha Jonas. And unless you've been living under a rock for the past few months, you'll know that it's the first female world title fight involving just Brits. Um, fair play to them and for being the main event. Um, you don't get many all-female main events in this country. I think Katie Taylor may be the only person who's done it before um, on a matchroom card as well. Uh, so I expect to see a really entertaining fight actually. Um, Natasha Jonas, good puncher, got those technical skills, obviously was an Olympian, amateur uh, world medalist as well. Then you've got Terry Harper, sets a fantastic pace, um, technical skills improving all the time. Um, young, fresh, determined, looked great, winning the title from Ava Wallström in her last contest. So I think it will be really a uh, good spectacle, um, easy on the eye, good fight. Um, I expect Harper to come through, I think just down the stretch. She's been fighting more regularly, she's the younger, fresher fighter. I think she'll have a bit more down the stretch than Jonas, although Jonas says she's got into the shape of her life. You don't just get into shape, I'm sure any boxer will say this, from one camp. Um, and I'm sure, you know, she hasn't been out in competitive action enough, I would say. She had that loss, of course, to Vivian Obernau. She's come back well from that, but not against top quality opposition. And I think that could prove the difference um, in this fight. But we shall see. Um, also on the card, Anthony Fowler. We get to see um, strides he's making under Shane McGuigan after uh, splitting with Dave Colwell, moving to McGuigan. There's a piece with Fowler on the Zoom conference call on our channel where he talks about um, the different styles um, of the two respective trainers and how under Shane McGuigan he's being encouraged to move more, counter punch more, whereas he was more aggressive under Dave Coldwell. We'll see how much of that we see against Adam Harper, who's certainly talking a good game in the build-up. Um, good fighter, was happy to go out to Australia to challenge Michael Zarafa for the Commonwealth title. Came up short, but since then Zarafa's shown a good account of himself against the likes of Kel Brook, Jeff Horn. The only issue I have with Harper is he hasn't really had um, a fight for nearly two years, I think. And I think that might count against him, against someone like Fowler, who is quite busy and strong and physically um, imposing, it's fair to say, even if he is boxing, kind of uh, using lateral movement and counter punching. So you'd expect Fowler to come through uh, via either points or maybe a late stoppage. And then you've got one that I think is the sleeper of the card and the one I'm most looking forward to, Cruiseweight, uh, Chris Billum-Smith, another Shane McGuigan fighter, defending his Commonwealth Cruiseweight title uh, against Nathan Thorley, unbeaten Welshman. I think that is, is potentially the fight of the night. Um, Billum-Smith looked great beating Craig Glover last time out. Um, only narrowly came up short against British champion Richard Riakpour um, not too long ago. I think still wants that rematch. And coming on leaps and bounds under McGuigan, he's been with him since the start. And also having that sparring with Lawrence O'Coley, who's in the same gym and is you know, the best cruiserweight in Britain, certainly at the moment, uh, could only have helped bring Billum Smith on. Um, Thorley got his best win down at light heavyweight before making the big jump up to cruiser. Hasn't been tested at the new 
division just yet, um, but a very good amateur, good technical skills, um, consummate professional, will have trained harder for this than any of his fights you would imagine, although getting down to light heavyweight might have been pretty difficult. Tall, uh, robust, good jab, um, going up against Billum Smith, who, as he's developed, has become more of a boxer puncher, um, smooth, uh, good switching from head to body, shot selection. So it's going to be a really, really interesting fight. And I wouldn't rule out Thorley pushing Billum Smith a lot closer than the bookies' would, odds would suggest. Um, I still expect Billum Smith to come through, probably on points, just with that greater top-level experience in his favour. But I expect it to be a really good fight. Also, before I go... I um, just want to mention a couple of um, other fighters in action over the weekend on other shows. Tyrone Nurse, um, British fighter, is out in Spain taking on Kerman Leharaga, who I'm sure you'll remember from beating the likes of Frankie Gavin, Bradley Skeet, before coming up short twice against David Avanesian. Um, he's on the rebuilding trail, if you like, back at home. Um, and we'll see how he gets on against Tyrone Nurse, who's a sturdy operator who's maybe lost his way from at a British title level not too long ago to, to where he is now, kind of taking fights where he can get them. Um, we wish Tyrone the very best of luck. We've also got Jamal James um, from Minnesota, who you can see a, an interview of him on the channel from a couple of months ago, where he talks about the efforts he was making in the community following the tragic death of George Floyd. Um, he did a food drive, brought, helped bring the community together in other ways as well. So a really good guy, someone you want to get behind. Um, he's fighting for the interim WBA welterweight title against Thomas DeLorme um, on Saturday night, I believe. So that's worth checking out as well. Uh, we want to hear what you think. Uh, your views are the most important. Let us know what you think of the Fight Camp card. Is it a step down from Fight Camp 1? Which fights are you most looking forward to? Who's got the best chance of springing an upset out of the outsiders on the card? It'd be great to hear what you think. I'll be back uh, next week for Flex Expectations on Thursday, as usual, previewing Fight Camp 3 um, and a Frank Warren show on August the 15th. Um, but I'll be back earlier than that for Reflections on Monday, 4.30pm, where I'll be looking back at the action of the weekend. So really appreciate your time, as always, and I'll see you all soon. Cheers.